Hello, everyone, and welcome into another edition of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Tony Sapita, joined alongside a very special guest, White Sox expert, and my season ticket partner, Jason Frank. How are you doing today, Jason? Hey, Tony. Doing pretty good. Thanks for having me on today. Absolutely. Glad to have you here. Glad you're doing well. And today we are going to be hitting on the Chicago White Sox, obviously. So they have been playing uh, very up and down baseball for the last week. Um, obviously, uh, we have had a couple superstars still standing out, kind of bucking that trend. Um, and we will get into that in a minute who we're talking about. Who knows? Uh, but we'll find out. So we also talk about the easiest series of the year coming up this weekend, an easy three wins. Add that on to the uh, or take it off the magic number for the playoffs. I'm not sure how that works exactly. But before we begin, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Stupid Car Tray. Tired of your pizza topping sliding, office coffee distracting you while driving, grease and other stains getting on your seat, or you're just enjoying a game on the couch and don't want to lean over? Look no further than the Stupid Car Tray. Proudly USA made, Stupid Car Tray makes your passenger seat or couch a level surface for all transportation and couch potato needs. With accessories like the Stupid Seat Anchor, hand sanitizer bottle, or 100% silicone grip mat, your tray is the ultimate car organizer. With over 20 different color combinations, there's a stupid car tray for everyone. Visit www.stupidcartray.com and use discount code J16 to get 16% off your entire order. Link in the description. It's stupidly obvious. Why didn't anyone think of it before? So, all right, let's get into it. Quick recap. So since last episode, the White Sox are four and four. They played, uh, they took three or four from the A's. Uh, it was a big series against the A's because of course, they're a playoff caliber team. We lost them in the playoffs last year. They're in the wild card hunt. I don't think they're technically in the wild card right now, but they are pretty dang close. Basically, they're a playoff team. So they looked like the hottest team in baseball. I was ready to crown them World Series champions already. Uh, they did outscore the A's 21-9. to uh, We lost the fourth game. It was a getaway game on Thursday during the day. It just kind of you know, got away from them. They could have won it easily, but that's okay because the most important game of that series of the week, I'd argue, uh, you could argue Friday, but I'd argue that game one against the A's was the best collaborative pitching performance for the Sox all season, which is quite ironic that it came on the night that we dropped our last podcast saying that the White Sox need to get rid of all their pitching, find all new pitching, call everyone up from single A. Uh, so, of course, Dallas Keuchel goes out and pitches a gem after a rough first inning. And Kopech, Kimbrell, and Hendricks are the greatest trio combination, whatever you want to call it, in the history of histories. They combined for one hit, no runs, one walk, uh, nine strikeouts in the last four innings. It's 12 outs, remember, in, in you know, three times four there. They got nine of them. Nine of them were strikeouts. That's incredible, especially because Kimberlin and Hendricks struck out the side in the eighth and the ninth to end the game. That is just exactly what you need from a playoff caliber team or against a playoff caliber team from a playoff caliber team, the Chicago White Sox. And that's what's going to get us in the, you know, help us win these games that maybe we're our – our hitting isn't, you know, isn't there like tonight against the Blue Jays is Monday night we're recording. Uh, so speaking of games where our hitting did not show up, that was uh, games. Well, we'll start with Friday, which was we, we took one of three against the Rays. The Rays are very good. Uh, obviously, they were in the World Series last year, so not terrible to lose multiple games against. We won one. Uh, it was the first game of that series. Friday night uh, went to 11 innings. It's awesome. Tim Anderson hit a home run, huge home run to tie the game in the ninth. Uh, Keuchel and Lopez, though, both, you know, took the mound respectfully Saturday, Sunday. They didn't look too hot. They they had bad games, and it just – it is what it is. It's okay. Uh, Keuchel, unfortunately, it's been a reoccurring issue. Lopez actually had been well leading up to this game, so hopefully it's not, you know, just the, the magic wearing off. Uh, then, of course, our less reliable relievers came into the game. That's just kind of what TLR does, Tony La Russa. He kind of puts in, you know, uh, Jose Ruiz and some of these guys, like Ryan Burr. Uh, he kind of puts these guys in when – he knows we're probably not going to win. Just get him some innings. So we were outscored 17 to four on Saturday and Sunday combined. And that's just, that's not good. That's not what you want to see. Um, so Jason, what did you see last week? Yeah. So one, I know you mentioned it, but I just really want to reiterate how great Hendricks, Hendricks bounced back after that, to be honest, really tough Yankee series series. Hendrick bounced back last week went two for two on saves and had an incredible 10th inning against the Rays. It proved that even if he does have a few bad outings, he doesn't get down on himself and he can in one inning bounce back. And then as we kind of all know, 
In our last 10, we've been four and six and haven't been playing our best baseball. Now, it is only August, so it really doesn't matter. And I just want to make a point of that, as we have been without some of our players that can potentially make an impact. For one, Adam Engel, he's been out for a while, but when he's back and healthy, he can change a game with one swing of the bat. Then we've got Rodon, who arguably is as good as Lance Lynn. He's missed some time. He'll be back healthy. And then, as we all know, quite recently, T.A. has missed the last three, but he'll be ready to rock in October. And in the cycle of the wins and losses, I'd rather slump in August than in October. So I completely agree with you. I think everyone else could agree. I would, I'd much rather, you know, turn it on for the playoffs. And uh, so, like we said, Tim Anderson is out, uh, but that's okay because it's only a few games. Uh, you know, he's been on an absolute tear recently, though. And that's mm-hmm. what we're going to talk about. And Jason, what do you have on superstar Tim Anderson? Well, Tony, it's clearly evident that we do need our all-star back in the lineup. We have lost three in the row with him out. He is out with leg soreness. Fine. We know that he would have played through it in the playoffs. So, like I said, it's fine, but we have lost three in a row, so we can kind of understand how big of an impact he does have when he is in the lineup. And the leadership and the fire that he brings each and every day at that number one spot is just irreplaceable. We saw firsthand at the Field of Dreams game. I mean, that game was incredible. And then no knock on Cesar Hernandez, but he has been playing leadoff man while TA is out and he just isn't getting the job done. He brings a lot of value to the team, but as a leadoff man, that's just not his thing. He's gone one for 11 and one walk, and that's just not going to get it done. Absolutely not. Yeah, he is good defensively, and except for that one game, he did have three errors, but obviously that was an anomaly. He's gold glove, uh, second baseman, so that's okay. But as you alluded to, by alluded to, I mean basically bash us over the head with Tim Anderson is our leadoff guy. He is the leadoff guy. And again, thankfully he's coming back soon. Thankfully it's just a little fatigue. We think I'm fine with it. Let him rest at the end of August when it really doesn't matter yet. Uh, He is the most important person on this team. Uh, He is 17th in total runs while missing 22 games of the season. That's a big amount of the season. Uh, He also the White Sox. This is a great stat that uh, Jason pulled for us here. The Sox are 18 games over 500 with Tim Anderson playing. They're exactly 500 without him. He matters. He completely changes the game. They are not a winning team without him. Like, that's just it's a stat that'll prove it for you right there. And uh, if that wasn't enough, I got one more stat for you here. Uh, this was on the White Sox, bro- White Sox broadcast tonight, Monday night against the Blue Jays. The White Sox this season, when Tim Anderson scores a run in that inning, they average about 2.3, 2.38 runs that inning that he scores. Not per game, just that inning. Just crazy. And an inning that he doesn't score, it's only 0.43 runs. So you can maybe argue that there's more innings that he doesn't score. So that maybe skews the statistic a little, but the fact that they score 2.38 runs in an inning when he does score, that is it just, it's so obvious how much he brings to this team and how much he brings like, overall is one of the best players in baseball. He could arguably win an MVP in the next few seasons, I'd say. Mm-hmm. So speaking of looking ahead, let's look ahead. This will kind of be our last topic here. We'll talk about uh, the two series we got coming up this week before um, our next podcast next Monday. Uh, so we got three more games against the Blue Jays in Toronto. The first time across the border, all, all the great, great up north. Um, the first time since 2019, because obviously we had COVID and everything as well. And they were playing in Buffalo and not that it would have mattered because I don't think we even played them in Buffalo. But Jason, what do you think about the upcoming pitching matchups for us against the Blue Jays in these last three games? Yeah. So Tuesday, tomorrow, we've got Cease versus Jose Barrios. Now, Sox fans, if you recognize that name, it's because we've already played him three times this year. He's just wearing a Twins jersey. And in three games that we've had against him, we've put up 11 runs, including four home runs. But he has struck us out 18 times in 18 innings. So expect this to be a pretty close one. And then we've got Cease, who's coming off a tough 5-4 loss against the A's giving up three and striking out six over six. So like I said, this will be a pretty close and competitive game. And then on Wednesday, we've got Giolito versus Robbie Ray. 
Giolito is coming off a seven inning performance where he got the win against Tampa Bay. I would bet if I was a betting man that Giolito has a great game and leads us to a win in this one. And then on Thursday, it's pretty far out, but it looks like we're either going to have Rodone if he comes back and is feeling healthy or Lopez. And now personally, I hope we get to see Rodone, but Either way, should be an exciting end to this hopefully close series. I completely agree. And then we have no off day this week for the White Sox. So to wrap it up, uh, we thankfully have basically, actually, we basically have three off days at the end of this week on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday when the floundering, terrible Chicago Cubs come to the G spot, the South side this weekend, come down to the blue collar half of the city where real baseball is being played. They wouldn't know nothing about that. I'll be at I'll be at all three games. I'm gonna be at game one actually on Friday with Nick, uh, you know, the boss man, the guy that does the Bears podcast with London. Uh, that's Friday. Like I said, uh, Keuchel will be starting. He's had a rough season. He could use this as a get right game. Hopefully, get going for that September run. I also wouldn't hate if maybe they they brought someone up or they they had someone else maybe start that game. Uh, Jimmy Lampert is an option. Just someone to kind of give him a break. Just it's fine. It should be an easy game. We're gonna win it anyway. It doesn't really matter. It's out of division. Who cares? Or out of completely out of league. It's <laughs> national league. So um that game I'm not too worried about. I just hope Keichel kind of figures it out. And then Saturday and Sunday, Jason and I are gonna be there. Season t- ticket holders again, not to flex on you guys, but uh we're pretty dedicated. So Lance Lynn is on Saturday. That's the game I'm excited for. Saturday night at the G spot in the jungle, baby. Uh, uh at guaranteed rate field. Lance Lynn owns the Cubs and he will continue to own the Cubs until the day he retires. He owned them on the Cardinals. He's owning them on the white Sox. Hopefully he retires on the Sox. But even if he goes to like the Baltimore Orioles, he's going to own the Cubs. It's what he does for a living. And I'm excited. It's going to be awesome. Bet the white Sox on Saturday, just blindly bet it for entertainment purposes only. Cause I don't know if I can suit for that. So Sunday Dylan cease. It's a day game. Sunday day game. We'll also be at that game. Uh, we won the trade. Let's just say that flat out. Dylan sees is a stud uh, way better than Katana ever was. I think I'd argue, but you know, it's debatable. He pitched a little longer, uh, but he, all he has to do is just avoid those 30 plus pitch blow up innings that kills him every start. Uh, almost every start. I won't say every start, but it is nearly every start. You'll find one, whether it's the second inning, whether it's the last inning he pitches, whatever he does have those innings where he kind of falls apart and that does end up screwing the white Sox. And it just kind of drives him out of a really good game. And it, it just, it stinks, but I think he can get that under control. Uh, so Jason, what are your final thoughts on this vacation, this easy game we uh, series we got at the end of the weekend? Now, Tony, I know you mentioned a bit of this, but I think it would be an absolute sin to talk about this Cub Sox series without mentioning Eloy Jimenez. Did you know we got him in a trade from the Cubs? I, I heard. I think so. Him and Cease, I believe, right? Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. I think so. But anyways, I think we should be expecting a big series out of Eloy and our White Sox this next weekend. Should be a lot of fun to watch. I completely agree. And with that, we'll wrap up another episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Tony Sapita. Thank you to White Sox expert Jason Frank for joining me today. Hopefully we'll see a little bit more of them in the, in the future. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Until next time, Southsiders. See ya.